Okay, welcome back CFAGERS to another fun week of lab protocol videos. Uh, as we enter the spookiest week of the year, Halloween week, we are doing an equally spooky um, protocol, DNA extraction. This is a very, very good protocol to have in your tool belt as a scientist. Um, it's, you know, a very common protocol. It's used in a variety of disciplines for a variety of research projects. Um, so having this in your tool belt is really good if you want to get into some sort of undergraduate uh, lab bench research or an undergraduate thesis that you want to do something related to maybe the gen genome of something, genomics, anything like that, knowing how to do DNA extraction or at least the fundamentals of it is really, really key. So um, lab manual for this protocol is pages 72 to 76. Um, this is the protocol that you need to be really paying attention. I know with some of them, um, it might, you can just, you know, daydream and it's still streaking. We're still going over the same thing, but DNA extraction is a very new protocol for a lot of people. It is a lot of new information and it's all jam packed into two hours. So you really need to come into open lab uh, this week knowing exactly what you're doing, okay? The first time you look at this protocol should not be while you are in open lab. There'll be a variety of resources for you to help you while you're in open lab, a bunch of guidelines, this video, these slides, and your lab manual has all of this for you, but you need to be familiar with it, okay? And if you stick around, if you stick all the way through the video, uh, there's a surprise at the end. So make sure we're paying attention. Okay, so let's finish up our MTL titer very, very quickly. So when you're coming into open lab, first thing you should do is look at your plates. Very quickly, look at your plates. Make sure you have some kind of plaques on them. If you have no plaques on all five of your plates, five, six of your plates, um, you need to let us know. Because if you have no plaques that came from a concentration of phage, um, there's probably something wrong with it, probably something in the extraction. Um, so let us know. We can try to give you a backup light like, hey, if we have some, but very important that you tell us. But again, maybe I'm, you know, don't want to be too negative. I'm sure everyone is going to be fine, but just precautionary. So if you, you know, results, negative results, pot results, um, you should still be taking photos regardless, right, for your lab notebook. Uh, this week in our in your lab notebook, in terms of analysis, this is when you get to use that titered PFU calculation that I have been throwing into these PowerPoints for the last four weeks, you're finally going to get the chance to use it. Okay. So at some point in open lab, uh, when you have some spare time and something's incubating, something like that, or when one person in a partner group is working on something, um, you need to count the plaques on the plate that has between 20 to 200 plaques. Okay. This is for your PFU calculation. Again, this is just a measure of activity, um, assess the concentration in your lysate of phages that are able to actively infect the bacteria. Okay. And then for following up steps, next steps, we are doing DNA extraction. So let's get into it, right? So the question of the hour is what is in my lysate? Okay, DNA extraction is essentially a protocol that spends a lot of time and steps just knocking out things that we don't want to stay in our lysate. Okay, so what's in it? So when you guys flooded a plate, a web plate on a bacterial lawn, um, what was in that lysate? So you aspirated some liquid on a syringe and you filtered it through a 0.22 micrometer filter. So you don't have any bacteria in it because bacteria are bigger than that filter size, but you do have bacteria phages, very obviously. You also have lysed bacteria. They are smaller than like full alive bacteria um, and they are the result of those plaques. So plaques are lysed bacteria. They didn't just dissolve. You have remnants of those bacteria still left. And then also what, what was inside the bacteria, like split all of its guts out when it lysed. So you have the bacterial DNA, RNA, you have bacterial proteins, and you have bacterial lipids. So this entire protocol essentially focuses on removing these remnants of bacteria that we do not want and isolating our phage DNA from within the protein capsid head. So if you recall your bacteriophage anatomy, um, it's essentially just a head, body and tail made out of proteins. And then our sweet, sweet DNA is within that capsid head. And we want to crack that head open like an egg and get that DNA out, okay? So let's start out. So we are going to get our lysate. We are going to aseptically transfer it into a empty microcentrifuge tube. After this point, after you've transferred your one microliter in, we are done being aseptic. 
That's because moving forward, um, a the, the results of today's extraction, um, we're going to be measuring the concentration. We're not worried about contamination. And also we are adding things to it that ideally will um, get rid of any contamination. Um, we're adding things that will be destroying various aspects, you know, just denaturing proteins, uh, getting rid of DNA that we don't want, anything like that. So we're not really worried about contamination for this particular protocol is what I'm trying to get at. So after you add your lysate in, we're done being aseptic. You can put those flames out. Um, after that, you're going to add five microliters of nuclease to your lysate. Okay, this is going to be something that either I or the TA helper will do for you. Um, but make sure that if you are handling the tube with that nuclease, you're wearing gloves just to be safe. You're going to invert to mix it. So just really quick invert to mix. And then you are going to place that in a 37 degree incubator for 10 minutes. Okay, that lysate nuclease mixture. So what nuclease is, it is a um, combination of enzymes that degrade nucleic acid. So you have a combination of DNAase, which is something that degrades DNA, and RNAase, which degrades RNA. So you have these two different enzymes in there that are degrading DNA. So obviously we don't want bacterial DNA, we want big DNA, so we are just um, denaturing and getting rid of the bacterial DNA. We don't want that conflating our sample in any way. So while you wait those 10 minutes in incubation, what you can do is um, you can count the plaques on your plate if you haven't a chance to do that yet. Um, you can double check your partner, uh, make sure that they're counting correctly because you always got to increase that sample size, um, you know, make sure the numbers are matching up and whatnot. So after those 10 minutes are up, you're going to add 15 microliters of EDTA to that lysate nuclease mixture. Okay, there's the long name for you of EDTA. You don't have to know it. I just thought it was kind of cool that it was so long. So I threw that in there. Um, you can invert to mix it, okay? What EDTA is, it is a chelating agent. So that's something that can bind metal cations um, or, or chelate metal cations as it's known, which is something very important for this particular protocol because uh, nucleases, they use these cations for their activity. It's essential for them to work to have these cations in the solution. Um, if we take them away, the nuclease turns off. So we're adding this EDTA to bind those cations such that nuclease can no longer work. We're turning it off, okay? So think critically about that. Why do we want to inactivate nuclease moving forward? Okay, it's not a trick question, but think about it. It'll come to you this week in open lab when you're doing your pre-lab, all that stuff. So after that step, what you're gonna do is you are going to be working on denaturing that capsid head, the phage. So you're gonna add, you're gonna get a brand new empty 15 microliter conical tube, okay? You're going to add two milliliters of something called DNA cleanup resin. This is just a multitude of things, but essentially the most important thing it contains is these microscopic polymer beads and they bind to DNA um, via the charges on the DNA backbone. So you're gonna add two milliliters of that to your tube and then you can add the entire contents of your lysate nuclease EDTA mixture to that same tube. That's approximately 1,020 microliters, but the whole thing is going in, okay? Um, you are gonna be mixing that solution, inverting it like this for two whole minutes, okay? So get a timer out. Um, make sure that you're doing for two whole minutes. If you are doing this, if you are handling the resin, if you're transferring it in, opening the bottle, um, shaking it, anything like that, please, please, please wear gloves. The reason for that is that um, this resin contains guadinium thiocyanate, which is something that denatures proteins. So what is on your hands, if not a bunch of proteins, okay? So you don't wanna accidentally get a solution on your skin that'll actively start denaturing the proteins in your skin, okay, in those skin cells. So make sure that we're being very careful, okay? So why are we adding that in? Essentially, we wanna, like I said, break open that capsid head because our DNA is inside. So we're denaturing the proteins. We're gonna be denaturing, you know, any bacterial proteins also, but the most important aspect is we are denaturing the phage protein so we can get that DNA. So we're gonna be using something in this protocol called wizard kit columns. That's just the name um, from the company that created them. These, but on the left, these are these little columns. 
Um, we're going to be working with them, very important. Um, so in this particular moving forward set of protocol, we are going to be isolating the phage DNA. So with these columns, you're going to get two per group and you need to label them very, very, very well. Okay, the reason for that is because we're going to be doing things like centrifuging them, putting them in blocks with a bunch of other samples so that you need to be able to distinguish your column from the rest of class. So put your group's initials um, on this like top lip part here. Okay, people in the past have also drawn little like hearts or stars or a bunch of like dots, something like that to get you um, to distinguish yours from others essentially. So these columns have this very, very fine filter, like a mesh filter almost you could kind of consider it, that prevents bees from escaping the column. Other things like these microscopic like lipids, proteins, um, chunks of denatured proteins, DNA, um, those all go through the filter, but not bees. So that's really essential because our phage DNA, once it is escaping the little capsid head, um, it's going to be binding to those beads. The microscopic beads bind long strands of DNA. So our phage DNA is bound to those beads. So while everything else is going to be filtering through, our phage DNA isn't, which is super essential. Okay. So you're going to remove, you're going to get two syringes. You're going to remove the plungers and you're going to attach the column to each syringe barrel. Okay. Important. So this is in a nutshell what it is. You have, you know, you have your syringe, you are taking the barrel out of that column. So you have just like naked barrel, um, or I'm sorry, the naked column. And then you are going to attach that um, column to the barrel of that syringe, okay? So what you wanna be careful with is you never wanna remove the plunger. So the plunger, um, when the column is attached to the end of this syringe barrel, okay? DNA is bound to those polymer beads right? They pack into the column as you push up through it. So if you remove the plunger when the column is attached, you're just like releasing the vacuum that the, uh, the plunger creates when it's in the barrel. And you're going to be dislodging the beads. You're going to be ruining the column. You're going to be dislodging the DNA that's on the beads. You're going to just be like completely messing it up. So if you do that, you're going to have to start over. So very careful that you do not remove the column. Um, I'm sorry, the barrel of the syringe when the column is attached. So let me show you how that works. So with full pressure on the plunger, you're going to take off the column and then reattach it without the plunger in. So let's rewatch that. You have full pressure. So full pressure on the plunger of your syringe. Okay like pushing down really hard, only then can you remove the column. It just unscrews. Then when the column's not on, you can remove the plunger and then reattach the column and reinsert the plunger, okay? Super, super easy, but never take off the plunger when the column is attached, okay? Never do that. So, now that we've had that, um, this is what your setup is gonna look like. You're gonna have your syringe barrel um, with your column attached, just sitting in micro centrifuge tubes in a little micro centrifuge rack, okay? Um, you're gonna pipette about 1.5 milliliters of this phage DNA resin solution that you spent two minutes shaking um, into each column. You're essentially having it, so half into one uh, barrel of a syringe, I'm sorry, yeah, barrel of a syringe and then the other half into the other one, okay? So just half and half, pipetting it, okay? Don't get rid of this tube, this is gonna be your waste container, but this setup is gonna be super key. We're doing this type of setup the rest of the protocol, so make sure we're on it. You're gonna insert the plunger into that uh, barrel once the liquid is in there and just push it through and collect any of anything that flows out into that 15, 15 milliliter um, conical tube I told you not to throw away, okay? So this is what your resin and lysate um, were in that you just transferred into these syringes. You're just gonna push it back in. This is gonna be waste, we're not reusing it. 
okay? So like I said, once you've pushed all that liquid out, maintain pressure on your plunger, okay? Just tap your um, the, the bottom of your column onto a paper towel just to dry it off, you know, just really quickly. It doesn't have to be extensive. Then again, with pressure maintained, unscrew the column, okay? And then you can remove the plunger and then reattach the column and then replace it into your micro centrifuge tube, okay? So after you've done that, we are going to be washing uh, salts and lipids away um, with the, from the DNA, okay? So we're getting closer and closer to isolating our DNA. So you are gonna be, again, with this setup, like I mentioned before, with your barrel of your syringe attached to your column, just sitting in a micro centrifuge tube for balancing, um, in a micro centrifuge tube tray, you're gonna add two milliliters of 80% isopropanol to each barrel, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna reinsert your plunger into your syringe. You're gonna push all the liquid out. You're gonna collect um, anything that flows through. It's gonna be waste. You're gonna collect it in that same 15 microliter tube, okay? Same thing as before. Once the liquid is expelled, you're gonna maintain pressure, maintain pressure on the plunger, dry it off very briefly on a paper towel, and then you're going to unscrew it, and then you're going to um, remove the plunger, and then reattach the column, re-put the plunger in, okay? So same as last time. You're going then to repeat this isopropanol wash two more times. So you're doing this wash process three times total to make sure we're getting rid of any lipids and salts, okay? After that, we are going to remove any residual isopropanol that could be in that column. So to do that, you are going to take your columns, you're gonna put them in new micro centrifuge tubes. Um, you are gonna spin them in a centrifuge at 10,000 G for about five minutes, okay? Then you're gonna take them out, you're gonna put them into new micro centrifuge tubes and you're gonna spin it for one minute um, at 10,000 G. Essentially, every time you are Spinning it, when you get it back, you should see there's going to be liquid at the bottom of that tube. That's any isopropanol is going to be pushed to the bottom when we're spinning it. So after this, again, we're going to remove any residual isopropanol that's still in there. But to do that, we're going to evaporate it. So you're going to be placing these columns in a micro centrifuge tubes, and then you're going to put them directly onto a heat block at 90 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's going to be there for 60 seconds. So when you put them onto that heat block, it's gonna be in the back of the lab bench. Um, don't go back to your table, Sit, like stay in there for 60 seconds, have your timer out um, so you can grab your samples as soon as that 60 seconds is done. If you let it wait a little bit longer than 60 seconds, then you kind of risk damaging your DNA. So make sure you are standing there just 60 seconds and then getting them and going back to your lab bench, okay? So now, after we've done that, we've evaporated any isopropanol, uh, we're going to be eluding the DNA. Elute is just means when you remove a substance by washing it with a solvent. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be removing DNA by washing it with uh, double distilled H2O. So you're going to place each column into a clean micro centrifuge tube. We're going through a lot of tubes in this protocol. And you're going to add 50 microliters of 90 degrees Celsius sterile DDH2O, double distilled water. They're gonna, it's gonna be in the heat block, okay? You're gonna incubate it for one minute, so let it just sit for one minute at room temperature, and then you're gonna spin it at 10,000 G for one minute in the, in the micro centrifuge, okay? That's just gonna push any um, liquid with your DNA down into the bottom of the tube. Okay, you're gonna have two tubes, gonna have liquid on the bottom of both. You are gonna combine them into a single micro centrifuge tube. Okay. So let's watch um, a video of all of this put together. Okay. DNA extraction. Use aseptic technique while performing this protocol. Begin by adding nuclease mix to one milliliter of a high titer phage lysate. Mix gently by inversion.
Then incubate the sample for 10 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius or 30 minutes at room temperature. After incubation, transfer 2 milliliters of DNA cleanup resin to a conical tube. Then, transfer the nuclease-treated lysate to the conical tube. Cap the tube and mix gently by inversion for two minutes. After incubation, remove the plunger from two syringes. Attach a DNA isolation column to each syringe barrel and place the barrels on clean microcentrifuge tubes. Transfer 1.5 milliliters of the DNA resin and phage sample mixture to each syringe barrel. Insert the plunger and push the liquid through the column with steady pressure. Repeat for the second syringe. Next, unscrew the column from the syringe barrel, remove the plunger, and reattach the barrel to the column. Repeat for the second syringe. Next, Perform an isopropanol wash by adding 2 milliliters of 80% isopropanol to each barrel. Attach the plunger and push the liquid through with steady pressure. Repeat for the second syringe. Repeat this isopropanol wash step as instructed. To remove residual isopropanol, detach the columns from the syringe and place the columns in clean microcentrifuge tubes. And spin in the centrifuge. Once they are spun, place the columns in a 90 degree Celsius heat block for 60 seconds to evaporate residual isopropanol. Place each column in a clean microcentrifuge tube. Add 50 microliters of water that is at 90 degrees Celsius to each column. Allow the columns to sit for one minute 
then centrifuged the sample to elute the DNA. After centrifugation, remove the columns and cap the tubes. This is your phage DNA sample. Okay, so some things in that protocol are different, um, and that's just towards the end. We add, um, we spin our columns twice, and then we put them on a heat block for 60 seconds, but otherwise exactly the same. So hopefully that put that all into perspective for you, especially understanding how this um, barrel plunger column um, situation looks like in practice. Okay. So when you combine everything together, this is your extracted DNA. You worked for almost two hours and this is the final product. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the concentration of your DNA. Um, we're going to use something called a nano drop. This is essentially like a spectral photometer. It takes an absorbance reading at 260 nanometers, which is the wavelength at which DNA absorbs light strongly, very strongly. And then it provides an estimate of DNA concentration based on that particular absorbance. Okay, so that's something I'll do for you, but um, we're still gonna be doing it. So we, our goal is around 30 nanograms per microliter for our DNA concentration. The reason for that is because we are gonna be doing a protocol um, that relies on knowing our DNA concentration. If you have under 30 nanograms, um, you're gonna re-extract your DNA. Um, very important, okay? So when I say we're gonna re-extract it, I don't mean within that particular lab period. Next week, the week after, so we're going to DNA extraction week the week after, um, it's kind of a makeup week for us. So you have the opportunity to redo your MTL titer if you did not get a countable number of plaques um, or your plaques were too low or too web, too light, something like that. If you couldn't get um, a countable number of plaques, you're gonna redo that titer. Or if you didn't get a high enough DNA concentration, you were gonna be redoing your DNA extraction, okay? And surprise, you made it through the video and now you get to see a pretty little dog for the rest of it. Oh, that's right, say hi to Luna. She really wants you to succeed in open lab, okay? So key elements to remember this week. Uh, be cautious, and what I mean by that is not just with um, you know chemicals or whatever you're using, but volumes, right? Measuring the correct volume, pipetting the correct volume, that's very important. So make sure we're paying attention um, and it's not gonna be too boring, I know Luna. Um, make, sure, make sure we're paying attention to the protocol or being very cautious with the more dangerous chemicals who are wearing gloves when necessary, but generally paying attention, okay? Make sure you are labeling your columns very, very, very well. I cannot tell you the amount of times uh, the label comes off when people don't label it very well, it like rubs off. So make sure we're doing that very well. Um, don't remove the plunger when the column is attached. Otherwise you have to restart that entire protocol, right? And then come in knowing what you're doing. That's very essential. Otherwise you're gonna be lost. It's gonna take you a lot longer than two hours, okay? Which brings us to our next point. This lab will take two hours, okay? Make sure you and your partner both signed up for a two hour open lab session and that you were on time. Um, really try to make it work, find a two hour period that you both know you can be there right on time, okay? This is not a protocol where you can come in 20 minutes late, you're not gonna get it done on time, okay? So if you have any questions, reach out to your TA. If you think that there's gonna be any issues this week, reach out to your TA, reach out to me, we can answer anything for you, okay? So. Good luck in open lab. Luna, do you want, do you wish them good luck? She's not saying it, but she's thinking it in her mind. Okay. But have fun this week. Get to extracting.